So today we're talking about runner beans. And this is just an explosion of beauty in the garden. In fact, in the United States, runner beans are often grown as an ornamental because they're so beautiful with their pops of color. Here's a classic runner bean flower. It comes in this red, this is the most common, but it also comes in shades of white, cream, there's some multicolored, here's kind of a salmon and white color. They're just beautiful. But what many people don't realize is that runner beans are an amazing edible. Um, in fact, these, these flowers themselves are edible. You can pop them right into a salad. They have a beautiful flavor, just like a light green bean flavor. And so in Europe, runner beans are grown as really a, a delicacy of a vegetable. So they're just a wonderful, wonderful addition to the garden. How are you going to grow your runner beans? These are amazingly easy to grow and so productive. When you get your seeds, you're going to want to put them into just a really nice soil. Often we'll add a lot of compost or even well rotted manure into there to get that lush organic uh, matter in the soil. So put them directly in the ground right after our last frost date, or you can start them indoors a little bit before, just making sure you transplant them before they get too big. They don't like a lot of root disturbance, so smaller transplants will do a little better. Um, they love to be in a sunny to a partly shady spot and have a good moisture supply all throughout their growing season. So not letting their roots get super wet, but also not too dry. So having kind of a consistent, but good drainage as well. You'll need a good amount of space for your runner beans because as you can see, they grow so big. You'll want to plant them next to a trellis or um, we've strung them up here and really making sure you have something that can get eight feet tall or taller. They are just going to grow and grow and grow and grow. Um, so having a support system. The great part about the runner beans themselves, if you put it there, they will grow up at themselves or you can also help train them up as they age. Look at these. So this is why you want a really big trellis because you can just live in here. They produce so much shade. So another fun tip that you can do if you have a really sunny space in your garden, you can actually use your runner beans as to make little shade zones for your other plants. So on this side of our uh, runner bean trellises, we're actually growing things that like a little more shade. We can kind of work with that, especially creating our little micro zones. So these ones are going to be our dry beans and here we have more of a creamy, delicious one. Let's see what else we've got. Oh, these are both kind of our more white and creamy ones. And these just make great winter food. So whatever you don't get to harvesting in the summer, they're going to dry down into these pods. And once they're brown, they're going to be pretty shelf stable. And you can cook them up like all of your dry beans. Soak them overnight. If you have some seaweed, that's a great way to just like help break that down while you're soaking them up. And then when you cook them, you're gonna throw them in a pot on the stove, give them a lot of water. I like to do about four cups of water for one cup of um, my soaked beans. We'll add our salt, we'll keep that seaweed in there, maybe a bay leaf to help with digestion and any of those spices you want to put in there. So I'm really into like different things depending on what I'm making. Maybe you're going like a lot of Italian herbs or maybe you're getting some of those um, garam masala herbs, you know, just whatever is going to be really yummy. And then just cook that on the stove. They, for me, usually take about an hour, but a good way to test if they're ready is your fork will go into them, their skins will peel back, and just pop one in your mouth. It should be creamy and just fall right apart. So give it a try.